guys, welcome back to another unfiltered game or board game or card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Fluttering Souls by Joel Lewis and published by Good Games Publishing. The game plays two players, takes about 20 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. Mm -hmm. Fluttering Souls is based on The Legend of the White Butterfly, a Japanese story about a man whose wife passes away he visited her grave every day for 50 years, bringing a single white rose. And the day that he falls ill and does not visit her, a white butterfly, the soul of his dead wife, comes to visit him, symbolizing her soul, and they leave this world together. In the game, players are going to be playing collecting butterflies from the board, and they're going to be taking turns. I draw one, you draw one, back and forth, until all of the butterflies have been taken. Much like games like Sushi Go, where you're collecting so sorts of sets, mm -hmm. this game will function the same way, and after all the butterflies have been taken, you're going to score based on the sets you've acquired. Whoever has the most points for that round is going to score a white butterfly, and the first player to get to three white butterflies is the winner. Let's go ahead and take a look down below at the game Fluttering Souls. So here's the game Fluttering Souls and we've set it up here. It's a two player game and over here we have sort of our map for the round of how the cards will look. And we have the butterfly cards in white corresponding here that are face up as well as the ones in black which will be face down. they will be a mystery until you get to those cards later in the game. In addition after you decide whoever goes first, the second player will receive the Great Egg Fly card, which has a unique switching mechanism for that disadvantage of going second. As well, the card you see, we have lots of different butterfly types, and on the card there are a few key terms to notice. The number of butterflies on the card is how many of this type of butterfly is in the deck. And you'll notice as well, we have, there's always two mystery cards removed from the layout. And up here will be how many cards you need, one, two, three, in order to score for this type of butterfly and the point value of that set. Players are going to take turns one at a time, starting with the first player and then proceeding with the second player, taking butterflies from this area here. Once a player takes a butterfly, the second player will have a chance to take a butterfly as well and place it on their side of the board. Remember, whenever you're the second player and you have this great egg fly, or if you're the first player and you have this great egg fly, you can place this down on the place in which you took the last butterfly of that specific turn. So they could place that there if they want to, or they can save it for a later turn. And it would go back and forth like so. You can only select butterflies that are available by being up on the top here. So these guys are covered and any covered butterflies can't be taken, but anything uncovered is able to be taken here. Uh, this here is a shallow tail, and basically how shallow tail work is, uh, there's only two of them. If you only have one of them, you're going to score two points at the end of the round. But if you have two of them, this turns into, they both turn into any butterfly, one specific type of butterfly. So in this instance, this one here is just worth two points on its own. And of course, it just proceeds like that, going back and forth, taking different ones. Reveal and that. when you, re yeah, when you, uh, basically when you open up one that is face down, so when you take one, like, let's say it was like this here, obviously when you take this, this is going to be revealed, allowing the player who previously, uh, whose previous turn it was, to now be able to take it. Uh, so this guy here might want to take the specific here. That's going to give him a set there. And it would just keep going back and forth. Remember, the last thing you probably want to know about this game is Monarchs score the most points. If you have two of them, it gives you two, which is okay. Three gives you five, which is great. And then four of them, if you can get four, is going to give you eight points, which is really, really good. So you might, may or may not want to take those. You'll notice there's only four in the entire 21 deck. And there could be one removed from this round in the game. So it is risky to go for the Monarchs. And the game is just going to continue just like that. Fairly simple. Uh, until eventually there are no cards left. And we'll just keep going ahead and taking these guys here. Up until the point where that is the end of the round. So this here would signify the end of the round. Callie would go ahead and take these cards and I'll take these. And we'll see how many points we got for this specific round. So I've got my three blue morphos there. 288s. 288s, a single blue morpho, which is no good, doesn't give me anything, and then a shallow tail. So this is going to net me three points for these two, four points for these three, and three points for these two, and two points for this one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
All right, I did not get three blue morphos, so that one's out. I did get the swallowtail for two, one set of the 88 for three, and three of the monarchs for five. Five, three, eight, ten points. So in this case, I would win this specific round, and I would take one white butterfly. In which case, we'll take all these cards, including the two cards that were re removed from the game, shuffle them all up, flip over a new one of these things here, and then we card. will go ahead and lay out a new set. So you're always going to have a different game as you're playing the game, as well as random butterflies in different areas. The person who lost will get to select who gets the great egg fly, and then the person who does not have the great egg fly will be the person who starts the next round, and play will continue until somebody gets all three of the white butterflies, in which case they win the game Fluttering Souls. Let's come up and talk about it. So let's go ahead and get into Fluttering Souls. Before we get into our review, let's talk about a couple caveats. And the one is obviously we didn't play the Great Egg Fly, but like I said before, when you take one uh, butterfly from the area of the board, uh, you're able to then take this Great Egg Fly and place it in the area that you had previously taken from. And then, of course, the next player might have to take this, or could maybe choose not to, depending on the setup. But uh, this is definitely going to limit that second player. And choices. The play yeah, yeah, the choices of that player. So you use this wisely. And remember, it's if that other player gets it, mm -hmm. then they will have the opportunity to place it down as well. Yes, in that same game. And it's best used, I think, when there are a certain card you want to cover up and not let the, your opponent reveal, or it becomes the only choice that they have to take. Yeah, I specifically like playing it when there's a monarch that is coming up, mm -hmm. and I don't want my opponent to take that monarch because I have at least two of them. If they have two monarchs and you get a third one, that's really good. Um, additionally, the other caveat is there's about 15 of these layout cards here, and they all are, have different combinations of, of ways that you can go ahead and set yeah. the board up, and I imagine you could probably even make your own setup if you wanted to as well. Yeah, if you wanted to. There's a lot of replayability with how this game is, is set up. So that's pretty much it. That's the gist of it. Let's talk about the review. Now, this is basically what I would say almost a microcard game. It's a small, very light game that you play five rounds of, roughly. Well, any, anywhere from three, three. to four. Three Hopefully to you're playing more than three because you have an evenly matched <laughs> opponent. Uh, you learn this game rather quickly, yeah. and then you can start to master it. Maybe I would say after your third or fourth time playing mm -hmm. it, you're going to have a good understanding of how the cards work, which ones are the best to get, and when they're the best to get. And I think you're best gonna you're gonna be your best at this game when you can think at least three or four moves ahead so if you have even a slight inclination to how chess and checkers are played fluttering souls is definitely gonna be a game that's for you but it's not perfect information because there are the hidden cards on the field as well as two hidden remove cards which do make it different as okay maybe it's not worth going after those monarchs because I don't see a lot of them on the board. <laughs> there could be two that are hidden. <laughs> yeah, and then of course the Great Egg Fly, by itself, just one single card that changes how mm -hmm. the game is played. Mm -hmm. As the player who doesn't have it, you have to be very wary of when you take something and how you take it because you know that that second player is eventually going to play this card. And when it does, when he does, or she does, that might influence you so drastically that you lose. So being aware of when to take certain things and how to take certain things mm -hmm. can be very important in this game. Knowing your opponent and what they're going after as well. <laughs> How about the artwork and the theme of the game? The theme is really cool. The butterfly theme really fits with how the cards are laid out and how um, just the art is great and how you're kind of collecting them. It's Yeah, it's beautiful and it's it, it has that light, fun feel. And just how the cards are, are laid out reminds me of the patterns of butterfly wings. Yeah, it's a beautiful game. I, I love butterflies in general. Uh, mm -hmm. Monarchs are have a specific place in my heart just because we're in California and we get to see them every year. And I have a lot of flowers outside and different uh, different shrubbery, as Monty Python <laughs> would say, uh, that will allow the butterflies to, to you know eat and whatnot as they're traveling down to Mexico. So I just really like that. Uh, we had a lot of nurseries around here that had a bunch of butterfly farms and whatnot. So th that might bias me a little bit just on that, just on that yeah. sense because I really like butterflies. But the artwork is great. The game is so light and smooth and easy to play easy to teach it's one of those games you just drop out you play maybe three it's, four or five rounds yeah. and it's it's definitely 20 minutes or less it's really quick it's polished is what it feels like it feels complete and total when like you really finish good. playing regardless of whether you win or not you feel like you had a good time and you feel like okay mm -hmm. we can jump into this or we can get into a more deeper game uh, I really really love this game yeah. it's, I really like the addition of the meeples even though they're not necessary maybe it, it 
plays off the theme and where the game uh, originated from the legend and it's just kind of fun to have an extra element to just rather than just a card game so those are all pretty much my positives to the game uh, overall really really enjoyable i think i only have maybe one negative in the entire game and that's such a little nitpick but yeah. there's one card in here in the number 15 the, is it number 15 so you actually know the number yeah because <laughs> i was like what <laughs> Yeah, it's this one here, and it's just, the, the, the actually image is just backwards, so it doesn't look, it, it should be turned around, basically. Yeah, you have to turn around the card when you, when you And that was my only thing. It. I think that was one of the first cards yeah. we actually played with, and I was like, how does this work? Do I turn it upside down? Are all the cards <laughs> like that? Uh -huh. uh, but otherwise, other than that, the game's yeah. polished. It has a beautiful theme, artwork is nice, it's quick, it's easy mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. If you like light easy games, you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> if you want something that's thick or a little deeper or a more strategic game this might not be for you it definitely is one of those quick pulls you will find a surprising amount of strategy in this game though mm -hmm. as you're playing it realizing what choices you should have made or what choices you shouldn't have made you learn from your mistakes in this game which i think is a good a mark of a really good strategy especially game. for such a light and yeah. small and simple <laughs> game it has enough complexity to make you want to pick it up again and again and i've played this game i'd say at least 10 times now 10 solid uh, three to five round games. Mm -hmm. And every time I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, I at one point was thinking that the egg fly was a little too overpowered and I always wanted to be second. And then I started losing as a second player and realized <laughs> that there is a specific advantage to going first and how you ch how far you can remember ahead is going to benefit you. Yeah, and how you use the egg fly. And, and sometimes it'll work great for you and sometimes not. <laughs> and of course, there is always that small amount of hidden information with those cards mm -hmm. that are face down. Mm -hmm. There's always two cards that are removed so you never know if if that extra monarch is going to be there or if that extra shallow swallowtail is going to be there as well and it could be worth two points as one card which is amazing yes. but if you get two of them it's it's like you pulled two cards for just one and that's probably not it gonna could be, as be good. a monarch as well <laughs> and if each player only gets one then they yeah, both get two points and it's a wash yeah. so you have to be aware of that but anyway that's basically what i think is that pretty much what you think of these? yes what i would add to is that this game is uh, yeah as a two-player game great for couples or if you need a game a filler game in between other people want to take a break but you have a couple people that want to play a game then kind of good palate cleanser or maybe even taking it before a date night dinner or something could be fun. <laughs> and it's interesting too because when we play games together when we go back and forth we can get very very competitive and very grumpy with each other when things don't go the way we want them to do but in this game we never really had that issue regardless of who won so that was a really positive thing for me to say regarding a game like this because usually in a competitive card game where we're going back and forth at it sometimes it can get pretty dark. <laughs> Somebody's sleeping on the couch, but but but, but not with a fluttering soul. So uh, very very impressed mm -hmm. with this game. Uh, I solidly approve of fluttering souls. I'm definitely excited to see what they come up with next. Joel yes. Lewis. Mm -hmm. I really want to see what it comes up with next, especially even a slightly even a more thicker, deeper game because yes. this one was so polished. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, don't forget to check uh, us out at YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, or you're probably already here, as well as hitting that bell notification button. Don't forget to check our website as well, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're going to have a live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. And uh, we always have a unique new guests coming over. We have IDW coming over tomorrow, whether this actually gets uploaded tomorrow or not is, we'll, we'll is a thing. Um, and then we have, in two weeks, we're going to have one of Kelly's co-workers, wives, um, yes. what's it called? Meeple People, a new uh, comedy web series. It's pretty funny. It's There's only a few episodes out right now. They're very short, but excited to share it I'll out. link them down below yes. as well. I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed our little butterfly extravaganza. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.